Hello everyone. Welcome back to Elevate in Spirit. Today we discuss a teaching on biblical prosperity, a powerful lesson from Mark chapter 10 verse 17 to 18. Join me as I give you a summarization of a 166-page book titled Financial Stewardship. Contrary to popular belief, it's not about accumulating wealth for selfish gain. Rather, it's about recognizing that everything we have is God's, and we are called to be stewards. As we use our finances to bless others, God promises a supernatural flow of blessings. Let's get started. In Mark 10, verse 17 to 18 says, As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, No one is good, except God alone. In this chapter, Jesus teaches the man about the commandments and tells him that if he wants to enter eternal life, he must sell everything he owns and give the money to poor people. This incident shows the conflict between wealth and the kingdom of God, stressing how important it is to let go of worldly ties and follow Jesus with all your heart. How the man responded to Jesus' instructions is a key part of knowing how hard it is for rich people to get into the kingdom of God. Now, let's break this message down into detailed explanations. Money as a Heart Revealer Jesus utilized this encounter to highlight a profound truth. Your attitude toward money reveals your heart. If your heart is attached to your wealth, it becomes a stumbling block. Jesus desired the rich young ruler to prioritize him, but the man struggled to detach himself from his possessions. It's not about God needing our money. Instead, it's about Him wanting our hearts. The emphasis lies in recognizing that our relationship with money exposes deeper aspects of our inner selves. Detaching from the grip of wealth allows us to align our priorities with God's desires. This encounter serves as a powerful reminder of the spiritual significance embedded in our financial attitudes. Zacchaeus's Encounter we compared this with Zacchaeus, a wealthy tax collector who met Jesus. Unlike the rich young ruler, Zacchaeus had a righteous heart. He willingly repented and expressed a willingness to rectify any wrongs he had committed. Zacchaeus demonstrated that money wasn't his God. His devotion was to Jesus. In contrast to the rich young ruler who couldn't detach from his possessions, Zacchaeus prioritized a relationship with Jesus. His repentance and desire for restitution showcased a heart aligned with God's values. The encounter with Zacchaeus serves as a powerful illustration of the transformative impact of encountering Jesus. Challenging Statements In our discussion, we must now turn our attention to some challenging statements made by Jesus. Jesus, in a declaration, expressed the difficulty faced by those with riches in entering the kingdom of God leaving his disciples astonished. This revelation prompted the disciples to ponder who could indeed attain salvation. Jesus stressed a crucial distinction, emphasizing that the challenge lies not in having money, but in placing excessive trust in it. He made it clear that the root of evil is found in the love of money, highlighting that money itself is not inherently evil. This profound insight challenges our perspectives on wealth and underscores the importance of a balanced approach to material possessions. As we reflect on Jesus' teachings, it prompts us to evaluate our own attitudes towards wealth and prioritize a genuine relationship with God over the pursuit of riches. Peter's question. Eager to grasp the significance of their sacrifices, Peter questioned Jesus saying, we have left all and followed you. What about us? In response, Jesus provided assurance to Peter, promising that those who made sacrifices for his sake would experience a hundredfold return in this present life. However, Jesus emphasized that this abundance would not come without its challenges, including persecutions that believers might encounter. Additionally, Jesus conveyed the promise of eternal life in the world to come, 
underscoring the enduring reward awaiting those who devotedly followed him. This exchange between Peter and Jesus revealed the profound concept that sacrificial living for Christ not only yields blessings in the present, but also ensures an everlasting reward beyond this world. Giving motivated by love. Emphasizing the significance of giving, it's essential to consider the underlying motivation. 1 Corinthians 13.3 highlights the idea that giving everything without genuine love for God yields no meaningful profit. The core motivation behind our actions holds great importance. In the New Covenant, giving from the heart based on love is more important than giving out of an obligation. To sum up, what matters is not just the act of giving, but also the love and purpose that drives our generosity. It's clear from the New Covenant that people are moving away from strict rules and toward giving out of love and kindness. Knowing that the thought that went into the gift is very important, the focus is on developing love and humility in our acts of kindness. Because of this, the New Covenant supports giving that goes beyond duty and shows a genuine concern for others. In summary, it's not just about the act of giving, but the genuine love and intention behind our generosity that truly matters. Promise of a hundredfold return. The exciting part is that Jesus promises a hundredfold return in this life for those who trust God with their resources. This promise is not a prosperity gospel focused on personal gain. Instead, it centers around advancing God's kingdom. If you cultivate a heart aligned with God's principles, the outcome will be a harvest of abundance beyond measure. The promise isn't a guarantee of wealth for selfish desires, but a divine assurance that your giving contributes to the expansion of God's purposes. The focus is on the spiritual aspect of giving, highlighting the importance of a genuine and generous heart. Through this principle, believers are encouraged to contribute to God's work with a pure and selfless motivation, anticipating both spiritual and material blessings. Consider it an invitation to be part of a greater plan, where your resources become a tool for God's work on earth. So embrace this exciting aspect of the message, knowing that as you sow with a pure heart, the harvest will be bountiful, bringing glory to God. As we conclude today's episode, I encourage you to reflect on your relationship with money. Are you a steward, recognizing that everything belongs to God? Remember, it's not just about giving, it's about giving with the right heart. Thank you for joining us on Financial Stewardship. Stay tuned for information on how to get your hands on our resources. Until next time, may your finances be a testimony to God's glory. God bless you. From Elevate in Spirit.